board members, huh? I said, uh, we could start it off with this Saturday. Conjunction yeah, with no, the, I think uh, that's fine. I mean, yeah. I, still, I thought it started the first uh, today. Well, it was supposed to, but he was just saying that we didn't yeah. set it up. Yeah, okay. Exactly the way it needed to be set up because we didn't realize that we had some things that we needed to do. All right. So let's see if, uh, let's see. Let's... So that's what this sucker looks like. Wow, that looks terrific. Okay. Nice. Much, much better than mine. And then we'll go ahead and tie another one. Just, we had some people come in late, and uh, it's good for you guys to see a couple anyway. Yeah. This is what mine that... looks like, but I didn't get the fly, didn't get the feather in proper. Sometimes that first time is a little bit uh, tricky. Well, the good news is we only do our first one once. That's true. That doesn't mean the second one's always easier. <laughs> no. All right. So once again, we're using a uh, size 10. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize I was uh, backwards. So did you guys see that that backwards too? No. The writing is the writing showing backwards on that? That's upside down. That yeah, is proper. Shows... I see it properly. Yeah, Wet I, fly I and it properly. Size okay, 10. It's, just showing, it's showing to me uh, uh backwards. But it looks it's, perfect on this end. Yeah. Right. Well they do that, they do that on purpose. Uh so that it doesn't. Apparently, people don't uh, identify with with because uh, you're used to seeing yourself in the mirror all the time. So they usually show the video of yourself to you in a mirror image for whatever reason. Wow. Okay. Well, if you notice, like sometimes you'll see people post selfies and those selfies will be mirror images. It's because sometimes the camera gives you mirror image so that you don't go crazy. <laughs> Which side the negative you look at, right? Right. <laughs> so here we go. We will once again find my thread. And we'll put a little bit of thread right on the front. Find a feather. Oh, I got one good. And I'm going to clean the fluff off of the bottom of this feather so that I have a, a good piece of stem to attach to. Um, I guess theoretically you could use that, instead of using that hair's ear, you could probably use that fluff at the bottom of the feather to uh, as you're dubbing. Oh, that's an idea. Well, yeah. Because yeah, that stuff has got a lot of movement to it. It might not be as uh, robust. And then so we're going to take our feather and we're going to tie it to the shaft and we are going to Leave a little bit of space in front. So see if we leave leave some space in front to leave a head up there. So what you may want to do is actually start your thread with about the amount of space you want for a head. And tie your feather on. <clears throat> Tie that whole thing down, or you can cut tip off. Oh, well, you just tie it down. That'll help you with your tapering as well. Now you're going to bring that thread right back up 
And you're gonna take your piece of wire. Let's see what I got down here. That's enough wire. And you're gonna attach that wire flat on the top of the uh, shaft. And you're gonna tie that. Oh, do I have it? You tie that back to the. Oops. I am having some thread issues today. Need to loosen this thing is what I need to do, probably. That's the that's <laughs> one of the problems with this these fancier bobbins is you can't put a lot of tension on the thread. And so you'll snap it just because you don't have it loose enough. Is that old thread? No, I don't think so. I just, I think it's a relatively smaller thread. And I, I just tend to heavy hand it. I'm bad about it. If you need some old thread, I got plenty of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a box of old thread. <laughs> from the club <laughs> and some old hooks and some really old feathers all right up a little bit put a little bit of thread on there find my piece of wire Oh, is this the wire? That's it. It doesn't help. I'll often nick the uh, the hook point with thread too. Yeah. And so just tie back to the bend in the hook, wrapping the wire the entire time. And that'll keep that wire on there nice and tight and then bring your thread back up because you're going to attach your floss you try to use a proper piece of floss this time instead of that little tiny piece that i had last time now does floss go all the way up to the hook eye no the floss gets put in behind the the feather okay goes back to the bend of the hook right and then back up to behind the feather. Okay, and wrap it there and tie right. it off. What there. you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna make the wraps near the feather a little bit more because you want it to taper. You want it to be thin in the back and taper up to the feather. And like oh, okay. I said, but you, what you want to do is you want to separate this floss because you don't want to use all of it because then you'll be you'll get a really fat fly. Yeah, unless of course you want a really fat fly. Way. And notice that you, even when you split it, you'll have several strands and see how it flattens out? Yes. Flatten yes. out a little bit. That makes it a little bit easier to wrap. Trying to get a nice tapered body. your extra floss and 
Then you're going to take that rib and you're going to counter wrap. your floss in the opposite direction, essentially, that you wrapped your floss. And that'll make your fly a little bit more durable because it'll protect those wraps. All right. Yeah, that, that one's a little bit better looking than the last one. All right. Once you tie that wire off, we're going to go ahead and palmer that feather. So put that thread right in front to keep it out of the way. If you have hackle pliers, take the tip of that feather. Were you supposed to add some dummy? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm glad you reminded me of that. <laughs> yes that was the part i wanted to see again I well the, the problem side. is is that i get into tying these things and then i kind of go off on my own <laughs> i appreciate you remind nobody else noticed i'm putting my dubbing on right now <laughs> yeah now that catch mentioned it no i was doing it but i wasn't watching you i was doing it from memory ah uh. That's hard to do when you're in your 70s. Is it now? Real hard. You don't have that much to remember, really. That's right. <laughs> Except how it used to be. Yeah, back in the old days, we used to take uh, horse tails and, and make them into leaders with some bear grease. and uh, We just used real flies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we go out and catch a, a caddis fly and, and tie it to a hook. <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't last long, but you know they caught fish. I bet. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, what did I do with my hackle pliers? Right here. No, there they are. All right, now I can take that. Now we're just basically spinning that dubbing onto the correct onto the line right. and then you wrapping. Get, you want to get fancy? You could split your thread with your with your bobbin and put. So essentially, you could take split the thread it. open with your with your needle, put it in there if you want to do it that way, or you could even do a dubbing loop. For a fly this big, just wrap, you wrap, twisting it on the thread with a little bit of wax is usually sufficient. That's, that's beeswax. Beeswax. Well, I mean, you could use fancy yeah, formulation of some kind of tires wax if that's what you got. Yeah. I think yeah. Dan has plenty of beeswax. Yeah, I got plenty of beeswax. <laughs> Well, that stuff's not cheap, I'll tell you that. I could probably make a real good deal on it if you want some. I think I could probably have enough for now. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's not like you need tons of it either. You're right. So this, uh, this piece of wax will probably last me a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I got, I got the little, the little tin was as 
was probably what the most of the cost was on that. Yeah. But that keeps it nice and neat. All right. So once you get your hackle on there, put a little uh, head on the front. What's it look like a mosquito? And I will usually put a half hitch or two on there in addition to my, oops. In addition to my final tie. And there we go. Nice. And some people had some at them and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you got to fill it iron. But I was just reading, uh, I guess, uh, was it Roxanne and Terry Wilson have those bluegill books that they write? Yeah. And they don't like to put head cement on their flies because they think the bigger bluegills won't bite them. That it's enough to just turn them off of it. And well, doggone it, they shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> That's been your problem too much head cement. For all of the years I've been putting head cement, now y'all jinxed me. Well, all right, I'm giving them a chance, doggone it. I'm putting the head cement. Yeah, I put head cement too. <laughs> I put it, I caught big ones. I hardly put head cement on anymore just because. Hey, Randy, here's what you do you catch a little bluegill on your fly, and then you take the slime on him and wrap and just, you know, get the <laughs> slime all over your fly. And that negates the. Uh, is that technically legal? Can you take, is that legal to take the slime from a fish and is that not bait of some sort? No. no. You're just putting the scent on it. I don't know. That, that, that straddles a line there, I think. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like Roger did that with a redfish some time ago. Well, um, that's probably questionable too. He caught a little bitty fish and then the big redfish ate the, ate the fish. But and catch, aren't you just putting the scent of the fish on there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I hate to tell you, putting scent isn't, I don't think putting scent on is uh, okay either, is it? Well, if you catch a fish and, and you'd use the scent of that fish, it ought to be okay. I don't That's know. right. <laughs> it's it's, not, not, an, it's be not an artificial right. scent. Well, so it should well, be all right. What are the official rules for Saturday? You got about a 10 page booklet for the official rules or? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's going to take some time. Yeah. <laughs> well, these fish would not be eligible for the jambalaya fish off anyway, because it's a stocked pond. Yeah. No, it's a public water. Is it a public so water? They, yes. yes they they public public water. Okay. So yes. it's, Private stocked ponds that are not allowed. Okay. Yeah, private waters. Okay.
like the one in Dan's backyard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a pond. I have a creek, but not a pond. That's a public <laughs> creek. You ever catch any fish in that creek? No, because I got to climb down about a 15 foot bank and it's pretty steep. <laughs> <laughs> you got to climb down the bank for it, just fish from the top. Uh, so much woods on the top, both sides. Excuses. The water can't be real deep in that, can it, Dan? No, uh uh. I mean, there, there might be some pools that are a foot and a half deep, but that's hey, about it. When people blue line, that's what they're fishing a lot of times. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that gets dumped in that creek, and I'm a little bit. Uh, well, that's the other part of it. Yeah, you don't want to be too close to that. Yeah. Looks good, Sydney. Yeah, he did a good job, Sydney. It does look great. Record, record, record on there. It doesn't matter how good you guys think it looks, how good the fish think it looks. Yeah. I bet it'll catch fish. Yeah. Uh, it probably would. Like I said, this is very similar to the fly I was fishing when I caught all those. Uh, stock trout uh it just had a uh i had a green uh hackle on it so it was more like a carrot where was this sydney this wasn't this year this is this oh. was a couple of years ago at the burbank ponds oh, okay back um, in the old days huh back in the old days like two years ago yeah um <clears throat> 